that you keep blessing us as a church, as individuals, as a body. Your hand has been so good on us. Your fingerprint is imprinted in our life all over. And we see the blessings. We see your mighty hand. We see the joy that you give us every day. In times of difficulties, you don't leave us. You don't take more than we could, you, we, we could give to you. <laughs> you are not a wicked God. You are a living and a good and, a, a, and an, an amazing God. Amen. So I thank you for being over here with us. Please, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Begin, you have begun with us. You end with us. Come and give us your word. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Today, I just have a question that I want to ask so, will God be able to testify about you? If God wants to brag about you, can he confidently brag about you? Make noise about you without he getting ashamed? And if God cannot brag about us, what do we have to do? Because we all like accolades, right? We want people to praise us for what we do. And God also wants to brag about us. He likes it. It is one of the things that he does in the Bible. Can God confidently say that, hey, Ford, this is who you are. And I can just bet everything on you and say that, okay, Hayford will never do this thing. No matter what happens, he will not do it. And can God be proved right of what he's saying about me? Or can God point a finger at you and say that, look, go. Stephanie, I'm telling you, you just go. I'll not have to talk too much she would definitely do what I say she is. And that is a question that I want to throw to us this morning. I guess even if I don't continue with the sermon, we are done. (laughs) Amen. So turn your Bibles with me. Ezekiel chapter 14. Can God testify about us? When I was putting this sermon together, I started getting emotional. It's like, God, this is deep. Mm-hmm. And I was praying. I had to preach about something else. <coughs> and I, I, I started praying, and it's like, These three boys, I was able to testify about them. What about us? Ezekiel chapter 14, from verse 12 going. It's a long scripture, but I don't want to read the whole thing. If you get a time, read from verse 1 going. The word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord came to me, came again to me, saying, Son of man, I'm reading from verse 12 to verse 20. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when a land, when a land sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness, I will stretch out my hand against it. I will cut off its supply of bread and send famine on it and cut off man and beast from it. Even if these three men 
Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. They will deliver only themselves by their own righteousness, says the Lord God. Verse 15 of Ezekiel chapter 14. If I cause wild beasts to pass through the land and they empty it and make it so desolate that no man may pass through because of these beasts. Even though these three men were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they will deliver neither sons nor daughters. Only they will be delivered, and the land will be desolate. Verse 17. Or if I bring sword on the land and say, Sword, go through the land, and I cut off men and beasts from it. Even though these three men were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they will deliver neither sons nor daughters, but only they themselves will be delivered. Verse 19 and 20. Or if I send a pestilence into the land, into that land, and pour out my fury on it, on it in blood, and cut off from it man and beasts, even though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. As I live, says the Lord God, they will deliver neither sons nor daughter, neither son or daughter. They will deliver only they themselves by their righteousness. They will deliver only they themselves by their righteousness. Their uprightness, they stand upright before God, these three men. These are four terrible things that plagues that if God should bring on the land, people cannot stand it. If he should send famine on the land, hunger, which hunger has caused some people to even kill their children. In the Bible, right? They will eat their children because they were so much hungry and they did that. Now, if God should send a beast on the land to invade the land so that nobody can get out, if you get out, you'll be eaten by that beast. Those guys will not be touched because of their uprightness before God. If God was bringing judgment on the land to bring destruction, these people will be spared. Could God tell that to us? And if today I want to invade here, can you stand? With God's judgment will come in our time too. Are we able to we will be able to stand if it comes, if the day comes, or we will not be able to stand? That is a question that always we have to ask ourselves. And then ask yourself, what did these people do? These three people. What is the uniqueness, their character that they had? We've read about them over and over and over and over again. We read about one this morning. Daniel. Daniel did a lot of things. If you read Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, Daniel purpose in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meat, the king's delicacy. He set himself apart. How many of us can set ourselves apart and say that, look, because of God, 
because of Jesus, I'll take the shame upon myself so I won't do this. I'll be ashamed of Christ. I'll make sure that um, I, I will stand for Christ. Let the whole world laugh at me. The whole world can laugh at me. Is everything okay? The whole world can laugh at me. But if it is all for the sake of Christ, I'm good. How many of us will stand for Christ? Daniel stood for, Jesus, for, Christ, for God. It's like, yes, I know this good food is good. And let's, let's face fact. You have good food before you. You have the wine before you. Great king's um, delicacy. I mean, you, are not, you, nobody, you have the food. You serve yourself. You eat what you can eat. You request and they give you. You don't, you don't have to be hungry before the king. The king says that eat and grow well. Build your body. Get some muscles for yourself. We want you to grow well. And as we were studying, Elizabeth brought something to our attention. I, don't, I think it's you, right? You said that Daniel was, a teen, it was young, a teenager. So at that point, this guy could have really eaten like the food left and right, with this left and right, you no, know, he has chicken here, meat here, take this, take that. And Daniel says that, no, I know my God. And so I will not defile myself. I will not let this food separate me from God. I will not let the gods of the Chaldeans separate me from my God. I will set myself apart for the Lord. And so it makes sense that how can someone be put in a lion's den? Then a lion decide not to eat him up. Is it that the lion wasn't hungry? The lions were hungry because they have been starved so they can eat Daniel very well. <laughs> and in a time that this was, Ezekiel was writing this, according to some theologians, Daniel was alive when it was written. So you can just imagine how big Daniel's head would be. Finding this prophet talking about him, that if everybody will be destroyed, you will be saved. He set himself apart. Now let me tell you, church, righteousness is not a weakness. It's a strength. Holiness is not a weakness, it's a strength. When you get to an environment at a place and everybody is jumping to doing what ought not to be done and you say no, it is a strength for you. People may think you are crazy, you are not part of the status quo, you don't know what is going on, you are colloquial, and they'll say all sort of things. Your ability to stand out among the lots tells how strong you are in the Lord. We are in an atmosphere, you know, in a world whereby good is seen as what? Bad. And bad is seen as good. What is righteous is, ex- is seen, is, is, is not esteemed. What is bad is what is exalted and esteemed. And so it has made life difficult for us to, you know, everybody wants to live to please somebody, to be part of, of the norm, yeah. the new norm. This is what is going on. That is how we have to live it. Yeah. But will it put smile in the face of God? That's the question he asks himself. How is God going to be? Is he going to be in heaven tapping his feet and say that, ah, I love this guy. Oh, he's going to be like, what are you doing? Can God testify about us? And as I was saying, as I was preparing this message, I was like, God, man, what, what, what are you doing to me this morning? <laughs> What are you doing to me this morning? He's always lifting the bar. 
Because we are not ordinary people. We are not commoners. Our citizenship is not on this earth here. We are just sojourners. We are passing. If we don't take care, we we'll always let ourselves, we we'll entangle ourselves with things here. And carnality dries spirituality. Carnality, it dries what? Spirituality. Become carnal in such a way that if you don't take care, the enemy gets you out. And so you see the scriptures through the lens of carnality. You see that because we want to satisfy ourselves, everything, we will just pick the scriptures and then interpret it according as our carnal mind wants it to be. But it doesn't help. God has called us for greater things. I'm telling you, you are set apart for something great. Those people shut the mouth of lions. Can God shut the mouth of the enemy against you? Or when the enemy kind of comes and pounds, you'll be like, ah. <laughs> and you fall for it. Holiness is necessary. It gives us a right to stand before Satan toe to toe. I'm telling you, that is why the enemy is trying to let us live our lives anyhow. So we cannot confront him. There is right in everything. You are citizens of America. If someone wants to deprive you of your rights, you stand with your chest out and say that this is my right. You understand it? But when you break the laws, no matter how your right is, you'll be put in a jail. And you can't say, it's my right, it's my right. No, you go to where you belong to. Because at that point, your right, you have the right, but your right also has a limit. The same way as a child of God, we have rights. But if we do some things that gives the enemy power over us, then though we have rights and we are strong, but we see that you become coward. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You become coward. And you cannot confront your enemy. Though the Bible is even giving you the strength to do that, God is telling you to do that. But you see that it is natural. It's, 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 it's called cosmic right. Like there's right in everything. There's right in everything. So we have to know that I cannot live my life anyhow and still say that, okay, this. The sons of Sceva, you remember them? They said that they were casting a demon out in the name of Jesus. And in the name of the God that Paul used to cast out the demons, not in the name that they know. <laughs> what did the demons do? They pounced on them, beat them up, took their shirt, their dresses off. That day, I'm like, we are sure. If these guys were proud, uh, <laughs> they were arrogant, uh, arrogant guys in the in the neighborhood. And demons are beating them and stripped them naked, and they are going home with their. Be like, oh my, <laughs> is it the sons of Sceva going? Why were they beating? They were beating because you have to have right standing to do some things. You cannot say that you want to run a marathon when you don't exercise, you sit down and you eat. Meat, food, nyafu, nyafu, nyafu. You eat, 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 and then you you stand on the on the on the on the <laughs> track with with those who have been running every morning. They have weights on them, climbing the mountain. Then you go, you say, oh, "Let's go." I got you. I'll beat you today. Be like, <laughs> this guy didn't even train at all. Let's see.
God is proud of us, people of God. I'm telling you, we have no idea. No king will say that they, they are not proud of their royal, the people who are in royalty. Right? Every king is proud of the prince or the people belonging to the family. Because when they are not there, the people who are in the family, they reign, they rule. So they are proud of them. And therefore, they would want them to live as they also live. Because they rule with him. Christ rules in the heavenly places with us. We are not commoners. We are not ordinary. We are people that God cherishes us. So Daniel says that instead of me eating this king's delicacy, I won't do that. And so it makes sense for God to say that if sword should come and kill the people, if fire should come down to consume people, if I bring my judgment, I'll spare these people. I'll spare their lives. Not just Daniel, because of Daniel. You remember when he was in the land? When Nebuchadnezzar wanted somebody to interpret a dream and they could not interpret, what did Nebuchadnezzar say? Bring all these magicians, let me kill them. And what did Daniel say? Don't kill them, Cain. I have a God who is able to interpret dreams and visions. And my God will interpret this dream to you because of him, the people around him, even the magicians got saved. Somebody around us, can the people around us who are unbelievers be saved because, be saved because of us? Or they'll be like, ah, because mm, forget about this person. Forget about him. Right? Some of the forget about him, there are some people, because you do the right thing, they'll be like, forget about him. Um, that's not the one I'm talking about. Because there are some people, they don't want you to say the truth. So they always tell you, forget about him, right? I'm talking about the genuine ones. who will be like, yes, I like this guy. Not because he drinks with me. Not because he does this with me. I like him because there is an excellent spirit in him. And I want what he has. Daniel did not win them because of anything, but he said, my God. He did not hide his identity. My God will do it. Nebuchadnezzar, I have a God who is able to interpret dreams. He's able to interpret visions. Can God do that with us? He can. There is nothing he cannot do with us. See, there's, what I wanted to preach was about you are a vessel of God. And I'll continue with this, not today. But there is nothing God cannot do with us. Active World Church. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we can think or imagine. And you have been called. If he did it, if he was able to testify about Daniel, if we, if we stand right, eh? if, if we, it was in the days of the letters, the days where it was do's and don'ts, they were able to stand upright with God. Righteousness was not imputed on them. They just literally lived their life for God. In our days, we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Bible written for us. We have Jesus coming to die for us. They didn't have, they have maybe the Torahs and somebody will read for them once a while or they learn it somewhere today. You have church, you have YouTube, you have everything. We, are read, we have so much resources. Yet our life, sometimes it's not, we cannot say that somebody, like, you're a Christian? Oh no, I don't think so. We have a lot. And so, a lot will be required of us. Mm-hmm. 
Daniel was confident to say that, test me. You just test us. Give us veggies and test us. Consistency. The satraps, see they chose one, is it 120, right? Satraps. And then they chose three people to be on top of the satraps. So the satraps are like the, those who are going to the governors and the senators and whatever it is in our system. Then the top three, Daniel was one of the top three. And these people conspired against Daniel and told Daniel that, look, king, let nobody pray. Because we know that the custom of this guy is prayer. We want to get him eaten by lions. Daniel said, okay, you've made this law. The book of Nazar has sealed it with a signet. Fine. You made it. Daniel chapter 6. Right? Um, Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. He went and opened the door, the windows, and faced Jerusalem, so he can pray well. If somebody tells you, don't pray, Amen. you go and hide under your bed and pray, or in your closet and pray. For that is, that is what makes sense, true or false. You tell me not to pray, I want to pray, what do I do? Hide and pray. Doesn't make sense to just go and then open the windows, just clear everything, and then face somewhere where everybody is looking at you. So they can arrest and arrest you well. Oh my goodness. What a faith. Why won't God really be proud of this guy? Don't pray to your God. He's like, okay, my custom is prayer. My custom is always engaging my God. And that is what I will do. He opened the windows. Made everybody see him publicly. And the people said, oh, King, we said it. This is the picture. This is the evidence. He was praying. Daniel, hey, come. Were you praying or you weren't praying? It's like, of course, you know I cannot keep my mouth shut. I have to pray. And Daniel was arrested. But the lions could not eat Daniel up. Let's be consistent in our Christian journey. Not today we are hot, tomorrow we are cold. Flip-flop. We get to this environment, we are Christians. We come to this environment, we are not Christians. We are Christians at home, we are, we are not Christians at work. Or we are Christians here, we go to another place, oh, <laughs> put, put God somewhere in the pocket. Here it is not God, you know? Let's talk about the business here. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Everywhere you go, you carry Christ, so that glory will be there everywhere. 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 We are human beings. Yes, once in a while, we will just falter. But we cannot be flip-flopping. Consistency. Can God testify about us? Can God brag about us like this man called Daniel? Noah was this, another one. The whole world, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, he says that, Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters, bore, and daughters were born to them, that the sons, Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, of all whom they chose. And Lord said, My spirit shall, <laughs> shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be. 120 years. Men sin so that so much that God cuts their ear, their, 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 their lifespan on earth. Sin chop off their lifespan. 
they used to live 500 years, 400 years, 600 years, and then they, they will live and live and live and live and still will be young. Today, people, if somebody is 30 years and you see him, all the body is just, is just um, dying. Sin. Sin is a decay. Then the Lord saw that wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So in the days of Noah, sin was so rampant, so much that if you go here, you smell sin. It was in their face. <laughs> and then God says that, I will destroy man. Verse 7. I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. Why? Because of sin. But did God get a remnant? Did God get someone who had really set himself apart for him? Yes. Noah was there when they were filthy. Noah was there when they were doing all the bad things. The same way today, a lot of things are going on. We are all in it. But can we stand out for God to say that, yes, all the filthiness that is going on, these people stood for God. They stood for me. They will never do the things the worldly people are doing. They will separate themselves. Their talk will be different. The way they speak will be different. The way they eat is different. The way they behave is different. So we can call them Christians or the people of the way. Because if you look at them and you need Jesus, you can just go to them and they will show you where Jesus is. God was confident to choose this man and tell him that, look, I'm going to use you to do something. I'm going to destroy the whole world, but I will need someone. You are the only one who is just and righteous on this earth. So I'll use you. Verse 9 says that this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. He was perfect in what? His generation. This is our generation. Can somebody say that? You live, you die, you go. Can someone point you and trace you by the God you serve? Or they can only trace you by your books and your degrees and the, 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 the work you do. I mean, anyways, those things doesn't count in heaven. What counts is what God wants you to do. I'm not saying don't go to school. <laughs> I, I'm taking certifications and I'm going to school. So go to school, but do what is right. This is the genealogy. This man was perfect. He walked with God. Walk with God. Walk with God. Walk with God. Let's walk with God. Praying, listening to him, spending time with him, hearing him, training our voice, training our ears to know from him. If you are not hearing from him or you are not seeing from him, just tell, be worried. I don't know, but... If I, don't, if I don't hear God, or I don't see him a little bit, it's like he's far away and I'm so much worried. Then I, I, I'm like, God, where, where, where are you? I just want to see you. I want to hear you. What do you have for me? I think we have to be hungry and desperate for him. And God chose this man to bring, to save a generation. And the final person was Job. I love this man. I do too. 
You know, it is not it is not Satan who went and asked that I want to just um, harm Job, right? It is God who brought it up. It is God who brought it up. Say, ah, Satan, why are you walking to and fro over here? Ah, you are walking here like you don't have any work doing. Let me give you some some work to do. <laughs> have you thought about my son, my servant Job? He's a just and a righteous man. He's upright, upstanding. He, 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 he will not mess up. I know this man. He's good. It's like, oh, it is you who has hurt him. That is why he's not doing the things he's not supposed to do. Just give me a chance. Break that hedge. Let me just get him. It's like, oh, you have my permission, 100%. I'm, I've taken those things, hedge from him. Just take everything that he be, belongs to him. Started taking his money, taking his children, taking everything from him. Yeah, Job opened his mouth and says, that naked I came and naked I will go. Can you imagine? You have put a lot of money in your stock market and before you realize, like, boom, everything is gone. <laughs> your building, someone has come to put a lock in your building and like, you know what? You lost this job, and because you lost that job, you are not able to pay for your rent or your mortgage, and so we have locked the house. You have to sleep outside. Then your friends come, and they start mocking at you. Oh, you, you're a sinner. And that is why God has done this to you. Guess God. Then your wife comes. Your wife, that you know that she's supposed to comfort you and support you, right? You went to the altar with you, and it's like, uh, in, in sickness and in health, <laughs> in good times and in bad times, I'm going to be with you. Your wife is like, you know what? I said it at the altar, but this one, I didn't sign for this. In goodness, I enjoyed it. I mean, we were having fun. Now we don't have fun again. The same God who bless you, tell him that, you know, you curse him. Then just die and go. Let me also go to my parents. At least if you die, I can divorce you. <laughs> <laughs> then Job is like me, open my mouth and curse God. I will not. It is he who gives and it is he who takes. So I'll never raise my voice against him. Today we have the Holy Spirit. We can do it. I said we have the Holy Spirit, we can do it. Because it is the Holy, the Holy Spirit gives us the strength to overcome all these things that is a struggle. We should not let the noise of the world tell us that we cannot do it. You can live a holy life. You can set yourself apart for God. You can say no. It's a strength to be able to say no. Say no to offend people and put smile in the face of God. Everybody can just be against you. But if God is against you, it's, it is, it is, it's not good. It will be terrible. Nobody can put you in hellfire with the exception of God. Nobody can save you with the exception of God. And so if he is against you, you are doomed. And therefore, it is better for us, for men to not like us. So that God will clap for us. Then, men clapping for us, for God to say that, look at them. What they are, they are clapping for him, for this very thing that he did. So, we are children of God. God is able to do great things with you. And I want to let you know that God is proud of you. Just as he was proud of Job, he's proud of you. 
but will you put smile in his face when he testify about the good thing uh, he testify about you of all the good things he thinks you can do can you stand and put smile in his face and not to disappoint him the holy spirit will give us the strength please Finally, creation awaits the manifestations of the sons of God. The whole world is groaning and is waiting for people like you. People like you. There are people whose marriages are falling. It it will take you to talk to somebody and their marriages will be revived. There is somebody in your circle who may be committing suicide and they, they want somebody to talk to and you are the person they, want, they will talk to. If God wants to do a change, he will use his people. We are part of the change that God wants to bring to the world. See, sometimes we see ourselves small. We look at the big pastors, those with names and crowd. And we see ourselves like grasshoppers. But if you will say that me, God can use me, he will use you. It starts from the little, little things. Be confident. Stand out for the Lord. Set yourself apart. Let the whole world scorn at you, but... Be crazy for Jesus. He says that if you are ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of you before his father and the angels. That would be terrible. You go to heaven and Jesus says that I'm ashamed of you. I'm a faithful servant. It will be a big blow, Right? Because he has entrusted a lot in us. He has entrusted a lot in you. You are not a commoner. You are not ordinary. You are not a commoner. You are not an ordinary person. You are great. Created in the image and in the likeness of God. When you speak, heavens will respond. And so Daniel, Job, and um, Noah were human beings like us in the days of the letters. And they did great things. You can also do amazing things for God to brag about you. I want to throw the challenge to all of us. From today onwards, let us set ourselves apart and tell God that God, if you were able to testify about Daniel. I'll put myself together so me too, you can testify about me to people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's pray. I want all of us to pray and tell God our God, By strength shall no man prevail. I need you to give me the strength. Sometimes it becomes very challenging. But I don't want, I don't want to be left out. People, somebody needs you in their life, I'm telling you. Somebody needs you in their life. You can touch just one person, and that person will touch millions of people. You have no idea. So pray and tell God that God, use me and help me, give me the strength to always stand up for you. Let me stand my grounds because of you. Use me to bring a change and revival to the world. If we are looking for teachers, if we are looking for people who are working in the kingdom of God, actively setting themselves apart. I want to be one of them. 
So help me and use me in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Tell God that it should help you set yourself apart. Tell God that, Lord, the things that you cannot do, you tell God that, Lord, help me do it. Help me do it. Help me do it. Help me do it. In the name of Jesus. Daniel, Noah, Father, and Job. These people, God, you use them. They set themselves apart. And you showed yourself in their life. Every time you prove yourself that you were with them. You proved yourself that you were with them. You proved yourself that you were with them. So we too, we are in your hands. Lord, be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, give us the strength to overcome every fleshly desire, issues in life. May we stand for you, Jesus. May we not bow to the idols of the world because you use us to crush the idols. So we cannot be part of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for being our Lord and our God. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Father, let your peace be with us. This week, give us the strength. Remind us of who we are every day. Give us the strength to know what we are able to do. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord go with you. May his countenance be upon you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May God exalt your horn. May God put his power in your mouth. You are protected from sicknesses. I seal you with the blood of Jesus. I thank you, God, for being with us. Your week is blessed. Your day is blessed. Your children are blessed. Your family members are blessed. Your parents are blessed.